Because just to think about it, repentance, redemption, and renewal. Who gives you that? Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. And today's video is all about preparing ourselves for Lent. I always believe that the Lenten season is the season of all seasons. Not just for Christians, but for everyone. It's the only celebration that you don't need much, not a lot of fancy things. Really, this is the celebration to dig in inside you. It's a transformational kind of a celebration. It's a spring cleaning of sort, and it's getting rid of all the unnecessary things and just focus on the passion, the sacrifice, the all that Jesus Christ has to offer for us, the offer of the way, the truth, the life, that eternal life there and that heavenly hope. Lenten season for me means repentance, redemption, and renewal. Just saying these three words gives me goosebumps because just to think about it, repentance, redemption, and renewal. Who gives you that? This Lenten season allows us to look at ourselves and commit to our Lord Jesus Christ. Why 40 days? 40 days because the number 40 has symbolic meaning in the scriptures. 40 days Jesus Christ fasted in the wilderness. Noah's time, 40 days of reigning, and 40 years for the Israelites roaming around the desert before they were able to go into the promised land. We don't count the Sundays during the Lent season. The Sundays are already counted as of obligations and we usually do fasting and all of that. So it's not counted for the 40 days from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday. First thing we have to do is to ask ourselves, what am I willing to do? What am I willing to do or willing to sacrifice to get to know Jesus more during these 40 days. What am I willing to do and to sacrifice for these 40 days so that after the 40 days, I have this renewal of sort, transformation of myself, meaningful and fruitful 40 days to get to know Jesus more or to get to closer to Him. That is an important question to ask yourself before Ask Wednesday. So on Ask Wednesday, it symbolizes repentance, humility, and mortality. Mortality reminds us that we're on borrowed time. God made us here to live here, to be our best, and to make a difference, and to hopefully live in the likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are striving for that. And Lent reminds us of our mortality. That's why when the priest applies those ashes on, on our foreheads, he says, you came from dust and to dust you will return. It's, it's a good way to start the Lenten season to remind us that we are mortals. We are humans. We're full of sins and we need to repent. Be humble to accept our weaknesses, our inadequacies for us to get to the next level of repentance and then we're redeemed and then renewal. Every year we're given this chance. Isn't that amazing how God is so good to us? The church recommends for us to look at three elements during this Lenten season where we can look at ourselves where we are and improve. So uh, by Easter Sunday, we have that meaningful and fruitful Lenten season. The first element is prayer. We all know prayer is so important. Prayer is our means of communication to our God, to our Lord Jesus Christ. That is our sacred space, our sacred time to just talk to, to God, talk to our Lord Jesus Christ, and have that one-to-one -one relationship. What we want to achieve is a spousal relationship almost to our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's through prayers. And I believe that prayer and faith has to go together. 
one can't have the other. You can't pray and don't believe that it will happen and don't believe that He is there, that God is there, or that our Jesus Christ is there listening to us, that it will happen. If it's not answered because it's for our own good, if it's answered because He knows what's best for us. So prayer and faith has to be together. If one is not, not there, then it's almost useless for me personally. That's what we can do to augment our prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, it's okay. You can start by waking up 10, 15 minutes earlier in the morning and have time to read the scriptures and reflect on it and bring those reflections throughout the day. That's a start. And don't worry about not having a prayer life right now. It's okay. We were not a practicing Catholic either. And when I began like seven, eight years ago, God will meet us wherever we are, wherever we want to start, He will be there. That's the beauty of our loving God, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will meet us where we are. So start now. The, the important thing is to start now. So you can do that waking up 10 to 15 minutes early. The second thing is that even just saying your prayer slowly and not so fast or hurriedly, like sometimes you don't even, not feeling the meaning of your prayers, it's just because you're doing it. So say it slowly. That's all kind of improving your prayer life. Or thinking about like you eat meals three times a day, and maybe you can do like if you're doing your morning prayer, maybe lunchtime you do your rosary. And then later in the evening, you can do a reflection and just a reading of a scripture, the Proverbs, the Psalms, just before you go to bed, or even doing a gratitude journal. I'm doing gratitude journal. And I can tell you, if you look at the things that you are thankful for that day, they are all blessings from God anyway. So it's also a kind of a prayer. You're thanking God for all of the blessings. Though that's another way. And then the other thing is that uh, when you're driving to your work, instead of putting on the music, just spend time with prayers or reflections. And when you're having a shower, have a, a quick conversation with God. There's no specific place and time, but the idea is to increase your prayer life so you'll get to know Him more. All these times, you've only been praying for yourself and your family, why not extend it to strangers, to uh, your friends, to the world? Listen to a podcast about spiritual topics. And there's prayers too on YouTube and also listening to gospel music. Do that. Those are other things to expand and grow in your prayer life. The bottom line is we want to get to know Jesus the second element is fasting. If there's a diagram for Lenten season, I'll put fasting in the middle, and then maybe on the side is prayer, and then on the right side, I'm skipping. That's the third element. I'm going ahead just because to illustrate we do the importance of fasting because it affects the other two elements. I think fasting is the one area that's kind of misunderstood by a lot of people including me. I did not realize that before, oh, you just don't eat meat on Fridays. But that's not it. Yes, the church recommends or some requirements that on Ask Wednesday and all the Fridays during the Lent season and Good Friday, you don't eat meat. The idea is that you, meat is a luxury, a little expensive compared to vegetables and fish. The idea of that is that if you don't eat in those times, you're saving some money. You know, you don't go out, you don't eat that much, you're fasting, you're saving some money, and you're supposed to have that saving for that money is for you to have enough to give it to the poor. That is the idea of that, fasting. It's not only food. There's a lot of things that you can do to qualify for fasting, and I'll explain that later. But the idea of fasting is that it will remind you Whatever you give up, the things that you like or what you're giving, deciding to give up, is to remind you of your dependence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without Him, 
you're not gonna have a fulfilled life. You're not gonna have a meaningful life. You're not gonna have a beautiful life or will not bring you to that eternal life that we are all aiming for. If you give up, for example, if you give up Facebook, if you give up Instagram or all your social media, it's not just, oh, I'm just giving up because. The reasoning for that is that you give that up so you will have time to get to know Jesus more. You have time for prayers, time for almsgiving. I'll explain it later what you can do for that. It's not just about money. Or you have time to reflect on yourself. It's all kind of a domino effect on all these three elements. That is the idea about fasting. For example, you know, every time you go get into your car, drive to work, wherever, you put on your radio, you put the music. If you fast on those music, that you decide, oh, I'm not gonna put music. Um, the trade-off is for you not having music is to have some reflections or prayers so that you get to know Jesus more or do the rosary on that time. Or if you decide to just have two meals a day because that one meal you do more prayers and the savings for that one meal, then you give it to the poor. That's what fasting is all about. I think fasting also reminds us all the the noise and all of the extras in life. One person will fast, oh, I'm not putting cream or sugar in my coffee. That's an extras of coffee. All of those doesn't matter because what matters is knowing Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, for us to be renewed and to be a better person. And the last element is almsgiving. Almsgiving is all about giving your, not only your money, but your time, your talent, your effort for the good of others, to help others. You're serving others, you're serving God. Of course, giving your tithes or your uh, treasures to the church or to an organization that you um, love or that you really support. There are other things on almsgiving. You can do acts of kindness every day. You can visit a friend or a family member that you haven't seen for a while that having some issues. You can um, volunteer. You can use your talent. If you're good in singing, you can volunteer and acquire. The Stations of the Cross, you attend daily masses anytime. You other things you can do for almsgiving is donating stuff or donating to your favorite charitable institutions and also use your social media account to um, for your talent or time to inspire someone to to bring awareness to this Lenten season acts of kindness you don't have to give up your Facebook set Facebook or use your Instagram or your Twitter account for something positive to spread positivity kindness and faith, hope, and love. That's what it is all about. It's, it's not giving up just because you have to, because it's required or something that you need to do it. It has to have a reason behind it. If you need to give it up, then do more prayers and, and do more fasting. Put your heart to it, and then you really will have that satisfaction at the end of 40 days that you came out better than you used to be. So humility is not that you're better than others, it's that you're better than you used to be. That's what the Lent is all about. It's 40 days that we've better than we started. Watching, I'm hoping that this video give you a little bit of inspiration how to prepare for Lent. I said it, Lent is the season of all seasons. And let's make it fruitful and meaningful. Prayers, fasting and then alms giving so try to find ways and what's important is try to start in small ways it's better to start in small ways and be good at it than doing so many things and you're not even achieving anything or not be bad at it times small things brings you to bigger things thank you for watching be kind be loving and be inspired and I'm hoping you will have an amazing Lent season. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.